So the first step towards answering that question would actually be to acknowledge that it is important for us as scientists to get in exchange with societal groups at all. And I think um, what we can learn from them is what we ultimately want is to create impact in the world, right? We are, so we are addressing holistic problems of the real world and we want to provide answers to that. But in order to do that appropriately, we really need to know what are the problems of the people in their ex precise context, in their real life. And for doing that, it, it would be important to get as an impact, uh, impulse from the societal groups, what they know about their stakeholders and their participants and about their precise context in order so that we can frame our research also in, that, in a way that they can firstly understand it and secondly that we are actually addressing questions that are relevant to them because maybe we scientists are sometimes addressing questions that are not relevant to them. So I think it's important for us to learn from them what is actually relevant to you and how can we address them in the way that you can use the information we provide. Well, this is a really interesting question, actually, because transdisciplinary research challenges us as scientists to go beyond the classic boundaries of what we do academically, scientifically, usually. What it ultimately means is to get people outside classic academia on board of a research process and engage in a mutual learning process with other stakeholders from society, to include their knowledge, their practical knowledge and their experiential knowledge and add it to our um, scientific processes. So it's ultimately not uh, only a process of communicating, it's more a process of mutually learning within the process and really engaging other societal stakeholders to also frame and give input to the scientific research that's actually been done. So it, it ultimately is a challenge to how to facilitate the exchange and how to build up trust and generate knowledge together beyond the boundaries of what our classic scientific language actually is like. Well, yeah, actually, I am convinced that we can learn a lot from the discussion, even if we don't uh, deploy the techniques at any time. Because to me, climate engineering is fundamentally different to climate change and climate change mitigation. Because climate change mitigation is addressing a problem backwards, a problem that has emerged already. If we now talk about how would, you, how would we go about regulating climate engineering uh, as a, tackling a, a global problem like climate change, it's starting from scratch a little bit in terms of how should it be ideally. It's not with a climate mitigation where everybody tries to defend what he already has done so far. Climate engineering is really like we as a global community have to come, come together to ask ourselves how would, you, how would we go about it ideally as a global community. And I think the decision-making processes that we define as necessary for climate engineering could actually be kind of a blueprint for how decision-making process on a global level should look like. Even if we never get to use these decision-making processes for climate engineering, we might use them looking back to addressing other global issues. <laughs>